Can I see? <coughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I just saw you. It was right here. Oh, here you go. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get her going. All right. <laughs> you got the recorders going? Uh -huh. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The uh, Protection and Welfare Committee for Monday, October 30th, uh, 2017, in uh, City Hall Room 207, is now in session. Uh, uh, Alder Scannell, the uh, chair, is here. Uh, Alder Galvin is here. Alder Dwarf is excused. Uh, Alder Nenny is uh, thankfully stepping in, so we have a quorum. Thank you. And Alder Zima, uh, I'm assuming, will be showing up shortly. Uh, take a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Our agenda is approved. Approval of the minutes from October 9th, 2017 uh, meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alder Galvin, second by Alder Nenny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That also passes. Now, before we get any further, um, I want to remind everyone that everything the committee does is just a recommendation to the full council. The full council has the final say, and our next council meeting is on the 14th of November. It's a little, usually it's the following week from this, but we got budget items coming up, our budget, so it's going to be pushed off a little bit. So nothing's final until the 14th. Sorry. Which is, and it'll be seven o'clock in the room next door. The council. You gonna you gonna stay? Uh, well, you have quorum, so. Oh, okay. Well, Alder uh, Zuma is here, and Alder Nenik is is leaving. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, we are on item four. Alder Zuma, we just started. Left my packet. Oh. Uh, oh, she's getting. Okay, we can wait a second if you like. Oh, all right. Uh, item number four, consideration with possible action on a notice of change of agent for Funks BC LLC at 617 Lemkiln Road. Staff? We have no objections to that. We'll have to wait, we'll for, have to wait for legal. <coughs> uh, I talked to her before and she said no objections. But. Well, you know what? Did you solemnly swear? <laughs> We talked about it beforehand. All right, okay. You want to wait, that's fine. No. Here's your gun. Just say I concur. Run four. Thank you. Yes. Do you, do you concur that uh, there are no objections? Yes, law department has no objections. PD has no objections. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. Concur. Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, by Alder Gavin, second by Alder Zimmel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That Two carries. Are you with Funks? Yes. We I just it. had a question. Are hmm? we are we going to be getting a new liquor license without the other name on it? There's like Keith Hermans is the person we want to have removed from our liquor license. I believe so. I have a check with okay. the clerk's office. Because our distributors want to know. Just that's the only thing. Yeah, I, I would I would double check with the clerk's office, but I think so. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, item number five, consideration with possible action on an application for an available Class B combination license by Weir's Industries, LLC, at 131 South Washington Street. Staff. Law Department has no objections. We have no objections either. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Zimmer. Second. Second by Alder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And that passes. <coughs> Uh, item number six, consideration with possible action on an application for a Class B combination license by Sonny's Restaurant, Inc. at 875 Lombardi Avenue, currently Leatherhood Brewing Company. Staff. Law Department has no objections. Yeah, Green Bay Police Department has no objections. Uh, take a motion. Motion approved. Motion approved Thank by Alder Gavin, second by Alder Zimmer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that <coughs> also passes. Item seven. Consideration with possible action and an, on an application for a Class B combination license by Donald Roos at 700 Bodart Street, currently Roundup Saloon. Staff. 
Law department has no objections. Uh, the applicant did submit a signed uh, security plan, which is didn't make it into your packets, but I added it in as additional item. Yes, yeah. yeah. so that was turned in today, so they have that on site. Okay. Um, talked to the captain, and he looked over the security plan. He thinks it's good, and uh, we have no objections. Do you need a motion? I sure, I'll take a motion. I just have a nope. question. Oh, question? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it says here building capacity it says 50 for restaurants. So is this going to be a tavern or is it going to be a restaurant or a combination of that? It's, the it's, 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 the it's not a restaurant. What's that? It's, it's not a, a restaurant. There's a parking lot that has 15 park parking spots in it. Well, but it says 50 restaurant and, and, and listed as a restaurant. Can we yep. open the floor? Motion open the floor by Gavin. Second to Bell or Zimma. All in favor? Aye. The floor is now open. Anybody who would care to speak on this? Any information on this? Just look and clean up that corner and make it a lot better. Are, are you the owner? Yes. Oh, okay. Please, yes, please uh, come up and state your name and address. <coughs> Donald Rose. And your address? So, uh, business address or home address? Home, home. 1331 Bellevue. Okay, thank you. And uh, it's not a restaurant? It is not. I'm going to serve uh, frozen pizzas from Hydrant Pizza. That's what I meant, my plan is. Okay. So would the building capacity be 140 total or? 120, I don't. If you look on page one, it says building capacity. It says 50 restaurant, 90 bars. I, I on the security plan? Plans. Security plan, I got building capacity 120. Oh. Here it says building capacity 50 restaurants. This is number eight. This is number eight. Oh, do we have the security plan is for number eight. I apologize. Okay. Oh, seven. she. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, never mind. We got the wrong plan. <laughs> yep. Got never mind. That's the right one? That's what I got. That one should be in your packet. That one's in our packet. Yep, yep. Okay. You're right at the corner of Quincy and Boulder? Right. Correct. Yep, yep. It's kind of been an eyesore for a little bit. Okay. We got 16 new cameras going up, inside and out. So. All right. That's okay. Good. All good. Thank you. Yep. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Elder Galvin. Second. Second by Elder Zimmer. Take a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second. Second by Elder Zimmer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Uh, item number eight. Oh, yeah, we should have seen that because it says mm -hmm. it right. Yep, yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, consideration with possible action on an application for an available Class B combination license by Rinconcito Andreno Inc. at 805 Boss Street. Yeah. Law department has no objections. This is the one where I talked to the captain about. Yes. <laughs> he said that mm -hmm. everything's good to go. Yeah. And this is the one we got right here. Yes, that's right. the yeah. correct. So we were just given that security plan. They just got it. But you the don't police. Know what that means in English? Uh, the Honduran Corral. Corral. Oh. So if I could just ask, which which little corral? Old bar is yeah, Sancito would have to be Lindy. Which 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 bar was this before? Um, Labor Temple. No. 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 Doesn't say. No. I think that's. I think it's one right on the corner of Close and Webster. There. I think it was something rolled. You know, he, he, he told me, but I don't remember. Okay. Was. All right. I'm, I'm good. You're good. Yeah. I'll take a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Gavin. Second. Second by Alder Zim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Item number nine: consideration with possible action. Uh, on an application for a Class A liquor license by Sings C Store 2, Inc. at 952 West Mason Street, currently has beer only. Staff. Law Department has no objections. However, uh, Police Department does have some concerns to share with the committee. Yeah, we, uh, we had some compliance checks that were done on that on April 11th. We did a compliance check and they ended up the employees sold to, the, to our person that uh, went in there to buy. Mm -hmm. And then the owner um, wasn't on site, and the person that was there did not have a license. So they got a license for, or a citation for serving, and then also for not having a person on site. And then May 7th, we followed up. They did pass. 
But then on October 20th, he's the current owner of 610 East Walnut Street, and his name is uh, Rondeer Singh Shergill. Mm -hmm. uh, we went in there, did a compliance check. We're doing all compliance, not just on that. Right, right, yes. It's all over the place. Uh, they sold to an underage person, and it was actually uh, Mr. Shergill that actually um, cited her, was cited and sold to a person. When we, when we talked to him, he said that um, he was busy, he checked it, but he didn't look at it uh, closely enough. So those are our concerns. It's up to you guys. This is number nine, correct? Yes. Right now they're selling beer and they want to sell liquor, uh, class A liquor as well. How well, often well, can they apply for <coughs> licenses? Um, I'm not sure if there's a well, if there's a limit if they get denied. Okay. How long of a waiting okay. period there is in between? Because he was denied, I believe, a year or so ago. Um. Less than that. Remember that? Well, hey, it was. It's one that needs a two-thirds vote. Yeah. But uh, why why does it need a two-thirds vote? Because uh, we had we had certain districts that we made, right? That were uh, what were those districts called? The clerk didn't know anything about that. They were uh, typically they do if it's within that moratorium area. Yeah, moratorium. Thank you. That's right. the area. So that's not in a moratorium area. No. At least the clerk I, I, hasn't I, hasn't flagged it as okay. they typically would flag it. I could be incorrect. We had three of them that night, if you remember. That right. All three of them didn't was, pass. They were these are this one is. In my district, and of course they've uh, they failed three times now, um, or twice. Well, actually, the places two, they had two in the first one and one in the second. Right? Uh, the first one was just one failure, but then the person that was there didn't have uh, a license, and you have to have somebody with a, a license to sell, or the owner. And the owner actually says he usually goes there or is there, but he had to go to his other place. That's what he told us. Um, and then the other failure was actually at the new place of 610 East Walmart Street, which he also wants. Well, chose a loose regard for you. Hmm? Chose a loose regard for the law and following the rules. Just presented the facts. Hmm. Well, if this, uh, if this is that, uh, I mean, we denied three that one night, and I, I, I believe if we're going to uh, grant this one, we should be granting the other two. So, and I'm, I don't believe that we're at that stage yet. So, I would just assume not approve this anyway. I, I think they should all have it, or the nun should have it. Uh, but then, uh, there's on top of that the issue here. I and I agree with you. I think uh, the city really needs to look at these uh, these sites, these convenience stores, and. Uh, I know there's an article in the paper saying a lot of these stores are becoming the what used to be the neighborhood grocery yes. stores. Um, but I think we need to, the city should adopt some kind of a policy. So it's it's pretty much all or none. Um, they all have it or, or, or none of them do, just to make it an even playing field. Obviously, if someone is, um, like the alderman Zimmerman has said, they're not uh, following the rules, I could see where, you know, you could definitely say no. but. Uh, so that's a side note, I guess, and I, I apologize for digressing. But I, I think that uh, considering the violations he's had, um, and I know he's probably just trying to run his business, but he needs to do a better job. This community um, suffers from alcoholism and an abuse of alcohol, and uh, if we're not all doing our job, then we're being part of the problem. And uh, I can't, uh, I would not be able to vote at this time for the license. Anything or motion? No, I just uh, in, in the general commentary, I just respectfully uh, disagree with you, Mr. Galvin, because uh, you know every situation is different. Some of them are very much alike. I don't want to say they're all different, but I, I think that's why it has to come before us. If it, if it was just a matter of signing up. And getting your license, it would be an administrative function. It wouldn't be a legislative function. And so we're allowed to use our, our judgment. I, you know, I've chosen on behalf of 
to follow what my neighborhood associations have asked me to do. They they want to they think the more liquor available in the neighborhood, the worse the neighborhood is. Of course, that's a matter of opinion, I guess. But you know, when you go to a bigger city, you you see a dominance of certain types of businesses in an area, and that's what helps bring them down. You keep your neighborhood stronger by by having neighborhood friendly type businesses. And I think uh, people especially, they need to have licensed people on the board. They need to be really checking. And they, they don't do that with beer. So what is it with, with alcohol? And I don't personally have anything against any of these folks at all. I, I have stuff in there and make purchases occasionally because it's close to my house. But I, the three or four neighborhood associations that I have to deal with uh, are kind of unanimously opposed to any of these in the neighborhood. They think it strengthens the neighborhood by not having the sale of, I guess, even alcohol. But, you know, there is something else. With, I can't remember what it is now. But, because uh, we had three of them, but there was one that had a head of a two thirds for I think. It might have been on the other ones. Yeah, it kind of blurs. I know we've dealt with the moratorium. There, there is one establishment that sells liquor that's about a quarter of a mile away, but it's a, it's a standalone business. That's all it does. And you know, when people's whole business is the sale of alcohol, and they really value their license, and uh, they are not dealing with a lot of part-time help and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, our our checks are usually when they fail, it's usually because of part-time workers. The owners aren't doing it. So, motion. Motion to deny. Second. Motion denied by Elder Galvin, seconded by Elder Zimmer. Uh, I've stated my case on this. I don't think I need to say anything else. So, uh, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion is denied. Item 10, consideration is possible action and an appeal by Ronald Shibuski. Wait, say it closely, correct? Uh, to the denial of his public vehicle operator license application. Staff. Uh, the law department recommends denial based on <coughs> the applicant's history of violations and offenses, um, including a prior OWI. The police department concurs with that. And to note on the, um, the denial memo that you have in front of you, um, his license was suspended but is currently valid. We did double check on that. So. The OWI is over 15 okay, years Okay, well open the floor. You get a chance. You guys follow the procedure. Sure. Yep. You just may take a moment to set it off. Does it make a motion to open the floor? Motion to open the floor by Elder Zimmer. Second. Second by Elder Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is now open. Just please state your name and address. Uh, Ron Shabuski, 105 Cleveland Street. Janet, is there anything you'd like to share with us? Um, well, the OWI was over 15 years ago. Um, I don't have any problems with alcoholism or anything like that. Um, and then uh, the licensing issue, um, I had to take care of that. That was due to an uh, unpaid fine that I didn't have money for, so they suspended me. But it is now taken care of. Any you, questions? I guess. Is, is your employer aware of the problems you've had with the law? Yes. And uh, I, I guess, guess I'm. What, what, what do you work for? Um, for Native Cab. Native Cab. Yeah, well, I haven't even started work yet. I'm trying to start work. But that be the company. Correct. Is, is that a licensed company in Green Bay? I, 
I've never heard of that one. I'm, I'm assuming so. I don't have the, the list of license companies. Uh, there's a shell right here from Native County. Yes, it is, guys. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, please state your name and address. My name is Daryl Cleveland, 3017 Gemini Road, Bellevue. You're here to vote for him? Yes, sir. Um, I came before you a long time ago to get my hard card, too. And I'm trying to help people get their feet back in order. Right? man came to me. He wants to get a job. He wants to go straight. I don't see any problem with it. He had some things with the law, and he actually helped your med unit here in town for about a year to snap some people, to clean up some things, to change his life. He told me, he came straight to me and said that. Anybody's going to come to a man that has done any major time or anything like that and tell him that he was helping the, the police out like that, lets me know that he was actually trying to help somebody out. All right. I didn't know about the 15-year-old OWI that I did not know about because I do not drink. I haven't drank in over 20 years. But I think this man coming to me wanting to get a job, I do want to try him out. Why not help him? We can't keep closing the door on him, everybody. You, you resort right back to what you were doing. Where, where's your business at, sir? Well, it's here in Green Bay. I, I, I locate out of my, my house in Bellevue. Yeah. Well, I mean, what is your business? I run a taxi cab. Okay. Do you, do you have a, a taxi cab license in Green Bay? Yes, I do. Okay, because I, I don't remember one called Native, but what, did it have a different name before? Or? No, it's been Native Cab, and I'm also just now acquiring myself, taking over Green Bay Taxi also. Huh? Ah. Yes. Well, it, it, I guess I'm having some problem understanding. Maybe you can explain it a little bit, because it says that you display false vehicle registration plates there in Vilas County. And um, registration of a vehicle operating while suspended in Green Bay here, improper display of registration player tag. What's that all about? Those are my old license plates around the vehicle, and I was hoping to transfer them, but they ended up making me get new license plates. So those, why those were on the vehicle? And actually, the police department. But th um, this was your private car. Correct. This is you weren't putting some improper. No, I wasn't on. just putting any old plate on there. This is this is my plate from my. Are, are you working right well, my now? My old vehicle, and I trans was trying to transfer it. This is are you working right now? No, I'm just trying to get to work. You need the operator's so license before you can drive. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the so when they buy it, it's just, they have it until they get it. So oh, I was not aware of that. So you have to wait until you're actually licensed to start working. Know what's gonna happen. So I'm just trying to get my life back in order and get back working. And because it seems you don't you don't want to follow the law. You know, I mean, you don't want to have your you don't have insurance. I, I mean, do have You don't insurance. have money. You know, and when you're in insurance. a hole, I know sometimes it's pretty hard to. I, I have all that taken care if of. If you hurt somebody without without insurance, then. Right. I understand. Um, so, your Vilas County uh, brush up, uh, you've got some charges pending. Correct. Okay, so if the operating was suspended, if you're convicted of that, would they resuspend your license again? I just went to court the other day and they dismissed three of them, and one of them they reduced down to a lower fine. Well, yeah, you had, you had four to begin with. Correct. Okay. And you dismissed three of them? Correct. But are you going to end up with a suspended license when it's all said and done? No. It was just until you pay the fine. And the fine's been paid. So you've been pretty lucky with all and this. And you said that check no. Well, it's, it's been a headache. It really well, has. I mean, it, it seems like either they're trumping up a lot of charges or you're just getting lucky and dodging the bullet on a lot of these. Um. What the uh, DA told me was they would rather the money go towards me getting my insurance, getting the registration, getting everything taken care of, rather than the city just taking in money for fines. Okay. So that's why they do, do it that way. So they're trying to help you out. They're too. trying to help me out. Are you going to take advantage of this? I'm, I'm doing what I can to get back on my feet. And Look, it, it just, you know, and granted we can't take into consideration these other things, but you, you continue to have these brush ups mm -hmm. every year almost. And I'm just, I'm hoping that. I don't want to have any more brush ups. Well, I'm hoping you're seeing the light here finally. And this, this good gentleman's giving you an opportunity to, to square it away. And, and I mean, how old are you now? 34. It's time, right? Right. Getting old? Getting old. Okay. Um, you don't have many more chances left in you. I understand. All right. I'm, I'm happy. Anything else on the resume? Well, I'm, I'm a firm believer in young people. Questions? I, uh, I, 
Uh, no more questions. No. Okay. Uh, anything else you care to add? No. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I got no questions. Uh, motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Motion by Elder Galvin, second by Elder Dorf. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Floor is now closed. And I'll take a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Elder Galvin. Second it. Second it by Elder Zimmer. I also uh, uh, think we should give him a chance. So uh, I'm in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. But it's not final until it goes to council. Thank you. Yep. Good day, guys. Uh, we are on item 11. Consideration is possible action on an appeal by Nicole Scanador to the denial for operator license application staff. The law department rec recommends denial uh, of this appeal based on the history of violations and offenses, <coughs> including the fact that you failed to disclose those violations in your application. Uh, we agree with the law department. We uh, deny her. You concur. concur. Concur with that. Uh, is someone here for this? No one's here. I'll make a motion to deny, and if she wants to, she can uh, reapply back to us. They, they've, been, they've been notified of the meeting? Yep. She's notified by mail. Motion to deny. Is there a second? second. Motion by Alder Gavin. Second by Alder Zimmer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that motion is denied. Aye. Item 12. Discussion with possible action on an ordinance relating to the prohibition of animals at special events with an exception to allow for the discretion of the special event holder in conjunction with the special events approval process. Staff, do we have that ordinance? We do have an ordinance drafted. Let me pass that out. It was a fairly simple change um, addressing the concerns of the committee at the last meeting. Um, essentially taking out the Celebrate America Fest and Archery provision and putting in a blanket prohibition of any special event unless approved by the safety manager pursuant to Green Bay Municipal Code Section 6.15, which is our special events ordinance. That's pretty much what we're asking for. So it can be on a case-by-case -case basis. Yes. So mm -hmm. if someone decides in the future that a event A would be nice to have uh, pets there, dogs, whatever, right. they can apply for it, it can be granted. And yep, right. essentially any special event, animals are prohibited unless the event holder requests yes for sure. animals to be allowed, which that will go through the approval process laid out for the special events committee. Right, so we're not saying no definitively, it's, there's always that option. Right, right. it's okay. no and less approved. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. Anyone care to speak on this? Okay, yeah, I'll take a motion up. Oh, question first, but hang on. Go ahead. I'm, I'm still a little bit not understanding here. So it's, it's prohibition, no person may bring an animal into an area where an event listed in subsection 2 is being conducted without written permission of the management of the event or an authorized representative thereof. Mm -hmm. So the event, not the city, is going to make a decision about it? No, the special events committee pursuant to ordinance makes the decision. So the city would be making the decision. If the event holder wished to have animals allowed, they, that would be part of their application process, and so they have certain insurance requirements that have to be in place, and so on. Um, and those are, those are laid out by the safety manager in accordance with the with the special event ordinance that we have in place. Would they be done administratively then? Yes. Pursuant to the special event committee. Mm -hmm. Well, what if someone didn't like it, for instance? I mean, what recourse do they have? Because it's just an administrative function. Someone didn't someone like. Well, that didn't like that they couldn't bring up that they could. Well, let's say somebody went to an event and mm -hmm. they stepped in some dog dirt, ruined a nice pair of shoes or something. They say, why have they got animals here? I'm just 
fabricated something. Right. right. Well, I would think the, spe the special event management, they're the, responsible. The special event holder would be responsible for handling any kind of complaints or claims or, or actions or anything that at that point it would be a civil matter between the special event holder and the, and the attendee of the special event. Historically, a special event was usually something like Bay Fest when they used to have mm -hmm. it. It was a, a larger thing and they had to meet certain conditions and I thought those all came through and were It goes through special event, by, right. It goes but through I thought special it was also approved by uh, Council on the I believe it gets reported out, but the, the special event committee <coughs> reviews the applications and, and approves them based on certain criteria that's set in the ordinance. So they're just applying the ordinance to, to each applicant. And the only way it would come here is if they were denied and they appealed it? Is that the idea? Potentially, yeah. Is, is there a provision for that here? It, whatever process for appealing a, a denial would be pursuant, would be contained in the special event ordinance in 6.15. And that is in there now? Mm-hmm. So, let's have a for instance here. Mm -hmm. We were talking about farmers markets last night, mm -hmm. and we traditionally weren't allowing them there. Now somebody might bring one in their arms, and nobody knows the difference or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was it was a city-sponsored farmer market. Now what happens the when it's not a city-sponsored one? They just decide that they want if they want to allow them or not allow them, and they. Well, my understanding is that the, the farmers markets are they're not city sponsored. They go through the special event approval process, and if the special of or if the special event holder or the, the organization or individuals who are holding the special event or the farmers market don't want to have animals present, they won't be present pursuant to this ordinance. If they want to have an exception and have animals be present then they have to state that in their application and it has to be approved as part of the whole approval process for the special event itself. This ordinance well, makes I mean, it that the, the by default... The farmer's market used to be on Monroe Street and then moved down to Washington Street. Mm -hmm. That was a city-run farmer's market. I do not believe that is a city-run farmer's market. And so that's changed now? The, it, the, the one on Washington have. Street, I believe, is... Downtown, uh, down, um, downtown, downtown Green Bay, right. So they are the special event holder. They apply for the special event and go through the approval process. Okay. Well, it's a departure. Change. So who's the special events committee? Special events committee is made up of the safety manager. Um, I believe the mayor's chief of staff sits on the committee as well. Um, there's representatives from other departments. I'm not sure exactly who makes up the committee, but it's all um, organized pursuant to the special event ordinance, which is in chapter 6.15. Well, and quite frankly, I feel uncomfortable when the legislative branch is cut out of all these decisions. Um, I, I really feel that they should come through here and, you know, a lot of times these things are fairly routine, but sometimes they're not. And it gives an opportunity for the public to have access through their elected representatives. So I, I guess I, I would like to see this amended to say that, you know, I have no problem with the Special Events Committee reviewing it, but that it should be brought here with a recommendation. The legislative, I, 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 I feel this administration uh, does way too much administratively. What other, uh, I mean, here we have the, the mayor's chief of staff is going to sit on a committee. So if the mayor wants something to happen, it'll happen, and we have no say so about it. What other items go before this committee? Anytime anybody wants a special event, so if there's a marathon that an organizer wants to The SoCal marathon goes before that event. Right. 
Any, you know, there's different categories and levels of special events, and then those carry certain requirements as far as insurance, as far as um, emergency medical staff that have to be present, with the, whether PD has to be involved for security, whether the fire department has to be involved. Um, and so all those representatives come to a table and review an application, see how many people they're expecting to have attend, um, and based on that, they have a certain checklist that the event holder has to go through to make sure that the event is um, is safe, that the proper insurance is on file, um, naming the city as an additional insured in case there's any injury or damages, and then if all those things are, are checked off, then, then the event can go, go forward. So what you're asking for is every special event in the city would now come before us to go through every checkbox for our approval or disapproval. That's right. So you want us? You want to search something? New. We 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 have. You don't want to do it just for dogs. You want to do it for, say, the Saucon Marathon. You want them to come to us after they've been to the safety committee. Well, they have a spend. They have a. And then you want us to review that application. Are they going to have enough cops? Are they going to have enough rescue squad people? Is there going to be enough DPW set up? Are there going to be enough volunteers? And you want us to go through all that minutia just like the safety committee has, to determine if we think it's going to be run properly. Like everything else administrative, uh, it, it has an oversight possibility. You know, most of the time it, it doesn't, it isn't problematic, but it does have a formality that it goes through here, and if somebody has concern about it, they can bring it up. If something goes to the safety committee right now, say it's all common marathon, that's what we're on. Mm -hmm. The committee says we're good with everything as it's set up. Mm -hmm. Does it come to council then for final approval? I'm not entirely certain as I far as what so. I don't think so. It may get reported out, but I'm not. I'm not. I don't think it goes for approval. Cool. Okay. It's it's uh, akin to if somebody wants to um, film a commercial on city deck, and we don't have a film permit in place, but we require them to sign a hold harmless agreement. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Parks Department would contact myself. I would draft a hold if that's what Parks Department wants to do, wants to allow a film crew out on city deck to film a commercial. I draft the hold harmless agreement with insurance provisions that they have to file a certificate of insurance, naming us as an additional insurer to certain policy limits. They agree to not damage the property. They will be responsible for any damage uh, on this date from this time to this time. And then they have that agreement and they can move forward. And then that's not something necessarily that goes to council. It's something that's up to the discretion of the Parks Department director. So it's not necessarily posted for the public to review or anything? No. But if the commercial is shot on city deck and because uh, it's on city property, someone right. who owns a business says, mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute, I don't want them on city deck in front of my property. Well, it's too late. They've got permission. They shoot the commercial. Mm -hmm. That person has no recourse mm -hmm. unless they try and do it again. And again, they're going to find out too late. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Gellman, if I, if I need either, it, it just, uh, you know, I'm not saying that everything has to be the way it used to be or anything else. We can make changes anytime we want to. But historically, we have these things that go through us. I mean, we go through, people want driver's license, cab driver licenses. We have people that want liquor licenses. Uh, all those things have a final say here and on the council. I, I, I just sh like to, I, I just shy away from things that don't even have a path to come through the legislative branch. It deprives the legislative branch from their, their oversight responsibilities. Now, <coughs> nine times out of ten, we probably rubber stamp and approve because we don't find anything wrong with it but we at least have the opportunity to. I mean, we just looked through a film that had quite a long list of stuff. I didn't feel that 100% comfortable, but his sincerity uh, overcame me. But I guess I, I prefer that all special events, and historically they used to come, and they had to meet a lot of conditions, and it, it gave opportunity for people to have questions about it. Uh, I I uh, I don't have 100% faith in something that's 
you know, really controlled by higher administration. I think these things should have to follow their path through the legislative body. I mean, um, that's where abuse can, can come in. In other words, somebody's a real good contributor, maybe they get a little more special treatment than somebody who isn't. I, I want to get away from all that kind of stuff. So I think there should just be a normal process that involves the legislative branch as it traditionally has. So I have no problem setting this up, but I think the final approval has to come here. Even though it'll maybe 99% of the time be a rubber stamp. We don't question we don't question two thirds of what's on our agenda. Uh, I, I guess my concern is and, and I I do believe that people need to have a right to know what's going on within their government. But do we hit a tipping point where we start to mire ourselves in too much of the minutia of operating this community and the events that go on in it? It's already hard enough for many people at council meetings who want to speak and they don't get their time because the meetings run on so long. And even at some of these meetings, the meetings run on so long that people can't spend hours waiting to get in and, and say what they feel they need to say. And uh, <coughs> I guess my concern is that we, we open that Pandora box and uh, I mean we're, we're in for the long haul and we knew what we were getting into when we got elected it's a normal process but I, I just I'm concerned that we're going to make it too long and too lengthy a process things that have been going smoothly could suddenly start being upset because ooh, I may not be here next year you may not be here next year same thing with Alderman Scannell what? we get other people in here and uh, maybe they turn this thing on its ear because we open up this door and they start making the process of uh, having special events almost impossible to do. And waiting two years to elect those individuals is, I think, going to put the city well, at risk. I don't know. I think uh, the city has always encouraged special events. Oh, they have, but I, I just wonder if we start but making it But there's a process difficult. by which people have to go through, and the, why, why is the legislative branch being cut out of the process? I don't think it should be. We have no, we will have no say so whatsoever about this unless there's an appeal, and we're not even sure about that. Is there any way of uh, someone could appeal anything to do with the special events committee? Because yeah, I understand you can't have people involved in the whole planning right. process meeting. I can't. I don't have the the chapter. I don't have six point one five in front of me. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, I know there's a, there's a whole process laid out from beginning to end codified by ordinance um, and that's the process that's that's I'd like to make a motion and that we, we table this until our next meeting okay. if you can give us oh, with our hold it hold it for our next meeting till our next meeting give us the necessary information we need in it enough time in advance that we can review it properly so we're well educated when we come to the meeting and discuss it um, Essentially, you, you would like to see a copy of, of 6.15. If, if, if you could outline the, the parts that we need to be concerned with so we understand exactly how it works. Okay. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Even if you want to throw in a little summary for mm -hmm. those of us who legally sure. escapes us. Okay. okay. Uh, who makes it, could you tell me again who, who makes up the special events committee? Because they're really the. They're I know the safety the manager. I know the safety manager is one member. Um, the safety manager, that's insurance department? In HR, the safety risk manager. Okay, risk manager. Police department. Police, to, and I think there's a representative from PD, from fire department, from DPW, um, potentially from parks. Um, Mayor's chief of staff. And don't quote me on this. <laughs> Um, just working off the memory. I think those are usually all the departments that are at the table. Um, that, but it's it's lined out in, in the special events ordinance. So the risk manager, some representative from the police department, representative from the fire department, and mayor's chief of staff, and you said one other? Um, fire, PD, parks, DPW. Oh, parks. 
Did you say PK? Because of right of way, if a street has to be blocked well, I would off. Imagine if it involves, like, say, the Fourth of July celebration, or calling the Coast Guard or anyone else mm -hmm. that might be involved in that. Mm -hmm. Which is why those meetings. Do you believe if, there, if there's an event that right requires um, emergency medical hope. services, if there's a, a number of people, like for a marathon, you need to have so many um, EMS sure. on hand, or if there's mm -hmm. fireworks. Right. Um, there's certain fire permits that have to be right. in place and things like that. I, I, I have no problem with mm -hmm. that group of people going through the minutia, as you say, and making the recommendation, but it should the final approval should be here in case people have concerns that they have a, a, a vehicle to express their concerns. Right now they don't have any. It's strictly administrative. Right. Yeah, so and historically, these all these events used to come through PNW and the council. All right. And I, I didn't think it was problematic, but I can remember where there were discussions. And and there was the decisions of whether they wanted one aspect of it or another aspect to should have in it. But I just can't go along with something that completely disinvolves the legislative branch and doesn't give the public, other than through their elected, I guess, mayor's office and his staff. All right. So you're willing to hold it then, so she gets this information, we can review it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're not talking about. I, I think we need to. The thing we need to talk about is, do we want legislative oversight, or don't we? I hear you saying you don't feel we need to. That's just a waste of our time. Well, I'm not saying it's a waste of our time. I'm not saying we don't need to. I guess I'd like to review the ordinance first before I start making any more well, comments. Well, that part I'm having trouble with at all, but I, I think the main, my main concern, I, I just want to express that my main concern is that I think this, this should find its way through the Protection Welfare Committee and the Council. And it could very well be what we end up doing, but yeah. I mean, it's just for the purpose of moving on, I'm just saying. All right. Sure. Uh, I second the motion. Be, all right, before we hold, uh, there were some people who did want to talk about this. Why don't we open up the floor and get uh, Sir, motion motion open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Motion by Alder Zimbel open the floor. Second, Second by Alder uh, Galvin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The floor is now open. Anyone care to speak on this? Please step up and name and address. Hi, Leah Hi. Laker, 227 Allard. I'm also the Executive Director of Military Avenue Business District. Um, so I, I think a definition perhaps is, is appropriate too for what is a special event because mine is technically on private property mm -hmm. so I did not need to get a it's special right. event right. permit. So I think it needs to be clear because that is another farmer's market in Green Bay mm -hmm. um, that we have in the plaza parking lot. And I do love dogs and have for the whole year and it has not been a problem for us. So. Yeah. Well on private property I think it's not considered a special it's, event. It's not great so you can do what you want. Well, I just want to clarify that. Well, with well, yeah, 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 yeah. Within, within right. the ordinance. Yeah. Within the ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, my name is Ruth, and I, this is not related to the dogs. <laughs> I just wanted to know on Section 8, and I know I do apologize. Um, I was in late to see if it was approved for Rinconcito. Um, oh, no, no, yes. yes. Okay. It was. That's what I wanted to check. You're, it was approved. Okay. But the little Honduran Rick Corral was approved. Yes. Oh, okay. The but uh, the committee just recommends as the council has the final say, yes. and our next council meeting will be the fourteenth of November. So uh, that's when it will be final. And we should be here for that. I don't know if you need to be. You could be. It'll okay. be in uh, the room right next door, seven okay. o'clock. It's a Tuesday, the uh, the fourteenth. Oh, okay. Well, but I appreciate you letting me speak up. <laughs> I, I, I don't really think you have to. It was not controversial here. Oh. Unless, unless somebody in the council, and they usually don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, we wanted to make sure the owners are there, so they just wanted to make sure everything was hunky dory. <laughs> so far, hunky, hunky Honduras. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you never, you never miss an opportunity. Yep. Uh, so, anyone else wish to speak on the uh, ordinance here? I'll take a motion to close the floor. So motion, motion to close it. Motion to close by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder uh, Zimma. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I'm just going to throw my two cents. My, my first initial reaction is that, you know, I feel like we're micromanaging. Uh, I don't know that we need to, uh, I understand Zimma's, Alder Zimma's point, and I kind of agree with that in many ways, but 
Um, I, I think there is a point where the legislative makes the law, the executive executes the law, and I think it might have changed where it just more streamlined the uh, process. I know some of these special events, some of them can happen kind of quickly. Uh, I know uh, I've, I've been involved setting up the 4th of July event and we're scrambling towards the last uh, minute there sometimes. So to then have to go through council uh, is a step that just adds more uh, uh, time to the process that sometimes is, is pretty tight. So, but I'm certainly willing to keep an open mind on it and look at it all. And, and uh, but my my first reaction is it's uh, I feel it's a bit of a micromanagement on our part and not not really necessary. But we'll see. So motion to hold. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that passes. We'll see that next. P and W. Item number thirteen. Discussion with possible action on a request by Alder Nicholson to review the implementation of a fee for dog permits. I thought we have that already. No, we don't have a fee for dog permits. He made it. He made. It, he put in a communication. I think he was talking the fee when the city reviews an applicant for more than two yeah. dogs or three cats or uh, sitting next to him at the council meeting after uh, Officer. Um, okay. Mavis. Mavis, Mavis mm -hmm. was explaining the process she went through. Uh, his comments at that time were, so we're taking up hours of her time to review these applications of these people reimbursing the city for that time. And that's where his uh, motion came from. Although he's not here to speak to it, so maybe I shouldn't be saying anything. But uh, That was my impression that that's what he was getting at as well. But you're right. I. I don't know. I, I hate to speak for him. Right. We well, either there, there, there is time consumed, so I guess you'd have to put a fee that was you can treat as a user fee. Well, you, yeah, you can only charge what it costs on average to review one of these. Um, so I, what I'm saying is, it, well, how much time does she spend on? It sounds like quite a bit. Because she well, then it probably needs a fee. So that might discourage things. If if uh, does staff have any input on this. Um, we were going to just ask for the um, ask for the committee to just review or to refer this to staff so that Officer Mavis can identify any specific concerns that the that committee has and then she can come back and report. Because we're we we not entirely know sure what's exactly the average what. amount of time, and then maybe you can have a fee that's appropriate. I don't have the exact time, but she was here was the last time I was here, and she said it takes her quite a bit of time because she sends out paperwork to them goes to the neighbors that are like in that in that block and talks to them to see if there are any concerns. Um, you know, there's several things she does, so it all depends on how many times she has to go back to the house and check. And mm -hmm. So they, it could vary. Well, some yeah, take more, and some take less time. time. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Some, some take, take more, more time and some take less. Correct. So would, we're just looking for the average. I, I would make a motion that uh, we refer this to staff so they can determine how much time uh, is invested by all city employees. On average. On average. So we can come up with a, a, an average time frame and then figure out what, uh, what, what it costs the city and her wages and benefits to do that. And then we determine and if we want to move forward. Fee. Motion to that motion. Okay, motion by Alder Gavin to refer this to staff. Seconded by Alder Zimmer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staff, Merry Christmas. It's all yours. <laughs> and now we're on item 14. And uh, Captain, thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. Very well. Yep. You're excused. Uh, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. It's real. Yep. Yeah, no messing around. <laughs> Item 14, discussion with possible action on request that the city develop a plan of action regarding the increasing rat problems on the west side of the city as previously discussed at the September 25th, 2017 PNW meeting. Staff? Okay. Is someone supposed to be here? Well, we have. Yep. Oh, well, there he is. Sorry, we you're right in the back. Yep. Um, we happy to oh. speak on this from inspections. Oh. Ooh. Breaking up that nestle. Bring it up, these. All right. That's a great we have here is an updated map. Um, that's going to show the complaints, calls, or complaints that we received in the last month of the 30-day period of time. 
We had 62 of them. They're in green. Previous ones on the previous map were red. So. Yes, sir. You got some on the what east side, don't no, 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 it's all west. No, no, all west side. Not to say that there isn't, but we haven't gotten any calls. And so green is uh, the last month. You see the clusters. Yep, you can see the kind of the clusters of the areas where the, the pockets are where inspectors are spending. Well, it looks time. like there was heavy red in some areas. Now there's none. There's not nothing in green. Is that due to the eradication process, or I think part of it is baiting it? awareness. Part of it is baiting and trapping. Um, you know, the poisoning the, the effects that are that are occurring and stuff. Um, Kind of goes in. Do you want to take a closer look? Do you want to rats are jumping the ship, so to speak. <laughs> Hopefully. So, um, do you see a reduction in the calls? It's still about same. It's about the same. The reduction will happen with the weather now, with it being with it freezing. The activity that people are going to see is, is always decreases this time of year as it starts to freeze. Um, they start going uh, burrowing and going inward and going into garages. Um, and uh, the activity is a little bit less. I, you'll still see some of it, but not quite as much as you see during the um, late July, August, September. So in your opinion, are we being successful? I, I think so. Um, it's un until, you com until you get rid of food, water, and harborage, they're always gonna be here. Um, it's, it's in my, my opinion, there's they, they need those things in order to survive, sure. and those are in abundance throughout all those all those neighborhoods. Um, I got some pictures of some some examples that I just printed off in the last month of what we're what we're dealing with. Um, I met with um, three um, pest control uh, companies during that time, and just kind of they reviewed what uh, what I, what we've been doing and uh, you know, talked to me about their services and, and, and things of that nature. Um, Kind of looked at our whole plan. We have updated our brochures. This was our old brochure, a very wordy, lot of information on it. This is the new, our new updated one that we uh, staff came up with. We also uh, talked to, uh, um, reached out to uh, C City of Seattle in King County, who is um, having a an issue with them as well. They gave us permission. Uh, to use this as well on our website and to use it to, to pass out to individuals with obviously citing their um, adapt adaptation um, oh. on there as well. So thought that can come up sewer pipes they can into your toilet. They, out there they do. We I've contacted our sewer department. We haven't had that issue here, but out there they apparently have. You're, you're going to change my whole lifestyle. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty rat. Yeah. So um, as well as the, the website now. Our letter that we send out that can be modified and that can be updated. Um, we kind of we have a, a generic one. We need to customize it based off of um, a property owner that we're we're dealing with. We can do that. Um, so that's our, our uh, lit drop that we do. Well, if we get complaints like in pockets, like, like for instance right here, mm -hmm. what we would do is we would do a lit drop of this whole. The whole surrounding area of that if inspectors are getting a lot of calls and then we would um, give that information out to them kind of walk through what they need to do the steps they need to take around their properties to help um, eliminate the problem and uh, yeah. educate them and okay so what is coming necessary. and there's gonna be less complaints let's say it's the middle of summer mm -hmm. do you gauge success by a lessening of complaints or the age success by going back and visiting the properties or a combination? I think it's probably a combination of the two of them. Um, I think what happens is, is um, in certain neighborhoods, like this past year, mm -hmm. it was in a new area, new neighborhood, a different area, and when it was different, generated a lot of calls. I think in some areas, in some in neighborhoods in Green Bay, I think they've been around for a while, and I think people have been dealing with them, and I think that just it becomes a, uh, well, why am I going to call about that? For whatever whatever the particular reason. So it's kind of hard to gauge. Sure. It's kind of hard to ga gauge those numbers. What we try to do is just focus on um, the complaints that are that are coming in and then what we're seeing, what we're seeing in, in and around the, uh, the areas. When you go into a neighborhood and you find problems, mm -hmm. uh, and I know you guys aren't rat experts, but you've got some training, so you might see something the average guy doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
are you finding cooperation when you notify those particular homeowners? Well, like that lady that talked about all the trails going underneath her shed in the back. Yeah, yeah. The majority, the majority of the time when we're when we go out there and we you know, do an inspection and we kind of say hey, this is what's happening, this is what's going on, you know, generally we get we get compliance. If we don't, we have tools Everything that you guys have provided us in in the ordinance to you know to abate those nuisances <coughs> where where necessary. So you do a one block area around the complaint. Yep, it depends. It's sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, depending on how isolated or how large. So, so that's a policy. Yeah, it's kind of an internal policy that we've been doing for for quite some time to do a lid drop. Sometimes what that does is when we do those lid drops, we we're, we're kind of hesitant to do them because then that creates a lot of um, attention to it, which is can be good, can be bad. So depending on. Well, I, I guess I wonder. It's kind of like a lot of things. Uh, going on in our society now until attention is drawn to it a lot of people keep it to themselves but yep. when they're aware that oh wow there's a lot more of this going on it's not just me and that tends to skew the numbers I know in, in police work they can skew the numbers and it doesn't mean there's an increase in nope. incidents it just means more people are aware now they're reporting it I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if for the good of the community um, you know we encourage people to report it obviously we're not going to go on yeah. and eradicate the rats nope. But if we encourage people to report it when they see something that they suspect. Yep. Um, but I also wonder if we had a policy about if you were to go back next year at these where these clusters are, these hot spots, so to speak, and start inspecting right away at the beginning of the year when it starts warming up to maybe get a, a head start on those issues and see if eradication worked or didn't work. Now wait for the, the storm that came up this year but mm -hmm. try to hit it off before it turns into a storm yeah that's something that we definitely can do we can definitely take more proactive approaches um, that is is a different you know kind of is different than what we've been instructed to do in the past because right. we've been instructed to you know just go based off of complaints that so we've always encouraged folks to to call in uh, complaints and stuff but with with us mapping them and with keeping track of kind of where these areas are and we have a whole database that that shows our our, our calls for service and, and things so we can kind of see where those trends are. Right, I, I guess that's my concern. If, if we're always reactive, mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot of clusters and it's going to happen time and time again. More people are going to talk about it and it's going to seem like things are out of control where if we're more proactive about it and we get ourselves out there and we get into these neighborhoods, especially where there were those, I mean, there's some significant hot spots there. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, these are just calls where people have, not saying that they've seen them, these are just calls where conditions are conducive. Okay, to, so not all yeah. of them I saw a rat, it's just right. that no, no, my neighbors are, were talking about yep. it, I'm wondering if I have rats in my in my yard, can you come take a look? Yep, so okay. for instance, like, here's some, I printed you off some photos of some examples of some of the issues that we dealt with in the last, uh, <laughs> in the last month. So, so when you when you get a condition like this, they're they have to clean that up, right? Yeah, that, that's that stuff we handle every every day, every week. All year round. What's that? All the time. Uh, pretty much. So pretty if, much. You we get gonna, if you get three thousand five hundred different complaints a, a year, and we are our nuisance inspector handles no quite some stuff it. like that. So if we could be more proactive, mm -hmm. if our inspectors were no, given no permission to go out annually every year and just try and cover the entire city during the year instead of waiting for a neighbor to complain about this we could take action sooner mm -hmm. and potentially eradicate some of these problems yeah like they, they said we'll never get rid of rats all the time oh. but we can knock it down and for the but this would take care of a lot of other complaints that we have mm -hmm. I mean about uh, possums raccoons other animals living in there or homes that are uninhabitable or being uh, lived in when they've been abandoned mm -hmm. You know, like See what happens now is if we get a call, we're, we're ins our inspectors are instructed to do a look around inspection. So it's limited proactivity. Um, so if we get a call at XYZ property, they'll look at the neighboring properties to see if there's similar issues going on going on there as well. What are these these green and black things? Are those uh, more apples? Apples. <gasps> so that's an example of a food source. Um, so when they we hear comments, well, what is the city doing? Well, we need, you know, residents help too, that if you have a fruit tree, if you have, if you have a food bearing tree or plant, um, you need to care for that. You need to, you need to clean up, you know, clean up after it. So that's an example of 
somebody's having an apple tree and they just need to pick up the apples around their uh, around the property so you're not providing a food source. Same thing with water. I mean, you'll see pictures of of uh, stagnant water and and uh, standing water, whether it be in tires or in buckets or in um, different things like that. Where that's what we're talking about when we say food, water, shelter. That's kind of stuff. Yep. That's so just exterior storage and provides an area for harborage. And how much nicer would this community be, and how much easier would it be to eradicate these problems if we had a proactive inspection department that went out and tried to hit every neighborhood once a year looking for problems? I mean, is that mm -hmm. feasible? Depends on what you're what you're inspecting and what we're I mean if it's just exterior nuisance yeah. stuff I'm, I'm talking about yeah. obvious stuff like yeah. this I'm yeah. not, I'm like not that, talking about yeah. nickel and diamond people yeah like, we no don't that wouldn't be that, that hard, depending I'm, on the depending on what you're I'm talking about this kind of stuff mm -hmm. where it's obvious this is a I mean not just rats it could be all sorts of uh, varmints and that living in there mm -hmm. um, feral cats mm -hmm. dogs I mean you name it and this is this gets into like this the standing water it gets into all, not only that but the whole uh, West Nile virus has been found in Brown County. I mean that's a. I mean those are the things I'm talking about. Yep. And yeah, that's what that's the that's why I'm bringing them to you because that's what shows the example of uh, when you get into that react reactivity right. type process. It's, you can only do so much then when you're when you're being reactive. Well, and, and that's what I'm so. But is that is it feasible that we could take care of the, some of these I mean obvious glaring issues? Do we have the staff? Do we have the time? It would be possibly. We'd have to give it a trial run to see what, with the staff that we have to see how effective we do it. Because right now we have one neighborhood compliance inspector whose primary job is to do that. We could try other techniques and try other things as far as during the different times of the year and how we're utilizing the resources that we have. But we'd have to give it a try to see exactly how much we can handle. Okay. Um. Is this a separate issue that I'm, I'm starting to bark up a tree here on, or? No, I think it, it's really, yeah, because well, we're talking about what do you want policy. To bark on a tree, though? We're, we're working on a rat. We're working on a rat <laughs> policy. So well, the, the, I, I wonder if uh, 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 waste pickup, if you know, when they're picking up the garbage, I know that they're, they're, they don't get it really out of their trucks or anything. But I wonder if they, if if uh, Public Works could also help out in that if they notice, they could report. Yeah, anybody can report stuff right, right now. So I'm not saying that. But they, I don't know they, if they may, they may I don't know do if that. we've told yeah. them. You know, kind of. They're familiar eye. with our inspection process because yeah. they they support us. They help us do lot cleanups. So in some of those pictures that you see where there's garbage and litter going uh, around there's on there's Wednesdays, there. they'll they'll work with us. So they know if they see stuff like that where it's garbage and, and stuff piling up that they would they would call us in. So well, what am I missing on this one? The garbage, garbage right bag the next to the ah okay yeah. so minor thing that's very minor but that can if there's a rat problem and that's been sitting out there overnight now you've supplied a food as a food, that's a food source and I'm not trying to dump on city employees but since I got elected I've had people complain about uh, grass mm -hmm. there was one lot in particular where it was 30 inches long mm -hmm. obviously city employees I'm talking about police fire they've all been driving by that but for some reason it didn't register. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess that's, I mean, I, I like what Randy's saying, educate the employees to be more aware because mm -hmm. it's, it's, they work for the entire city, not just DPW, not just police. Mm -hmm. But when they see these situations, and I know when I was on the job, if we walked into a house, we would call inspection yep. or, or fire if we saw issues like that. Mm -hmm. but and any time that we get a, a complaint and it has long grass, we immediately refer that over to DPW because they're the ones that handle right. the, the long. So we'll, we'll note that. We'll, we'll keep track of that in our in our complaint our complaint tracking and then we'll refer that over to the responsible party so we try to educate even internally too if you're seeing stuff let us know about it so we can you know get on top of it okay. anything did uh, so the plan you've developed is what just do as we education, enjoyed. education and enforcement. If we need to, we there are funds in public spaces. Like if, for instance, when the city acquires a property, if there's, um, say, it's on the west side or east side, or wherever it is, um, if there's evidence of an infestation, we'll contract with a um, pest exterminator to come out there and and debate the problem. If it's in public areas. Um, 
we could possibly do that as well, parks, things like that. On private property, it would be my recommendation and my professional opinion that we don't do that because there is an, an equitable way that we could take one, one person's taxpayer dollars and say, this taxpayer on this street should get that service. There's no, I don't, it's, there's no equitable way to be able to do that. Well, that's true with everything. Yep. The taxing situation, some people have mm -hmm. no children, they still have to pay taxes yep. for the So, yeah. based on my experience and the inspector's experience that are, that are out there and what we're seeing, like I've said many times, food, water, harborage. Those are the criterias that they need. Until you eliminate that, taking any kind of money, whether, I mean, some of these pest control people, they do a great job, um, $8,500 an hour for their service. Until you take away the food sources, the water sources, the areas of harborage, you can continue to throw money at it. But if that is still gonna be there, you're never gonna get rid of it. It's just a never ending cycle then that, that's creating. So you're not taking care of the root cause of the problem. You're only throwing money at it and then temporarily making it go down and then it'll pop back up until it's being reactive. So that's why I say in order to be effective, we need to eliminate harborage, we need to eliminate the food sources, we need to eliminate the water sources. If you're having an issue, if you do those things, the rats will go away. If you need to hire an, an exterminator, I think that that, you know, if it's an enforcement thing, we have the ability to enforce that. We if we have a property where somebody's in non-compliance and they're creating a nuisance, like some of the pictures that I showed, and they have a rat infestation. We have enforcement tools and, right, and that, that can help the neighboring properties to say that person needs to hire a professional in order to abate the problem because you're contributing to it. We have that ability to do well, that. We, we do that already, don't we? We do. We do. I mean, if somebody complains about rats at their neighbor's property, we go and write orders on it, mm -hmm. don't we? Yep. Yep, if we see evidence in that and if they have to comply with that. So that's why I say we have all those tools. So, but to just hire somebody for the sake of, it's, it's, I don't think it's a, uh, an appropriate, appropriate use of taxpayer dollars. No, you would just hire them, they go out and poison a few and the rest would flee to the next property that's unkept and unsightly. It just pushes just moving the problem. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, like I said, with food, water, harborage, that's the biggest thing that, ed that we need to get education out there is that that's, it can be stuff that is, is perfectly legal in the city ordinance that allows, but that is food and sh shelter and water sources sure. for them too, so. Yeah. Well, I think those are, you know, reactive things that our department has always done and mm -hmm. we're going to continue to do that, but I, I, I have to say that I, the, the rat complaints are at an all-time high in my in my 40 years in the city council. Mm -hmm. I had two more just in, just in, over the weekend, mm -hmm. and I say, well, what's what's changed? Well, we, I heard these theories that well, the water the river levels are up; they're forced out of their normal hangouts in the in the sewers and stuff like that, so that. You know, we don't see them, mm -hmm. so they're 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 coming. They're going to higher land and finding their way into neighborhoods. That mm -hmm. you, you, is, do you know is is that a fact? I can't speak to the the uh, the river levels. I'm no expert in, in you know water levels or anything like that. But what I can speak to is the abundance of food sources in the neighborhoods, and the abundance of resources that once they're in the neighborhoods, that. It allows that it allows the populations to to okay. to grow. Well, let's see, let's examine that once. Um, I feel one of the differences could be the fact that we don't do bulk pickup the way we used to. We used to do it every single week. Uh, somebody put stuff out, we picked it up, um, and I I know that. Uh, some people, when they saw somebody put a boatload of stuff out in front of a property, they say, why has everybody got to pay for that? And I guess I, I never, I just think the service should be there and we should just bill people, you know, when, it, when, it, when it's over a certain amount or something like that. But that, that, that is coming up to INS. Uh, I did talk to Director Grenier because we did put in the communication and that will be coming up to INS. 
What do we do? Because we do what do we do? I, Alderman I, Zima, respect. What do we I, do about situations like this then for bulk pickup, whether it be in a a garage or when they throw it around the back? It might there. have to be a charge. Yeah. But no, that's the point is, is they won't. They don't put it out. It, it gets it gets well mis okay, you know. because they do bulk pickup twice a year. You can also bring these bulk items to the drop off sites. All you need is a trailer or a pickup truck, or you can throw yeah, it in. The everybody truck has truck. one of those. Yeah. You know? so, I, I don't know. Or you like to think that you know somebody that does. Well, I'd like to think that people take responsibility that when they have trash or stuff yeah. like that. Well, that they take but, 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 but INS will be taking I, this up. So I'm I mean, gonna, I'm going to talk more generally. Okay. We had a bulk pickup for this. for very history that I know up until four, five, six years ago. Uh, when it was taken out of the budget. And we get aggressive with billing people and all that. Well, is that is that leading to people not getting rid of stuff like they used to? I, I don't know. I guess it's anybody's opinion, but maybe we ought to have both pick up, you know, the first pickup of the month or something like that, at least once a month, and see if that helps eliminate some of our problems. Maybe it doesn't. You know, there are some things that they don't, they've got nothing to do with whether the bulk pickup's there or not. But um, obviously if somebody thinks they're going to get keep charged, maybe they go. Well, I, I don't want to comment about it, but yeah. I, 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 that might be a solution. Right. But, 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 uh, but there's the bulk... There's been too many, there's, I, 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 I think the rat situation is the worst that it's been. That in, in my my knowledge, and I'm worried that there's some people that don't know how to deal with it, um, and they, you know, it would be just like, well, where do I go? In what way? What do how, I do? What way would they not know how to deal with it? Not know who to call, or not know? Well, uh, it certainly looks. Somebody's like a 75 year old lady that yeah. lives alone, and there's a there's a hole going in underneath her garage, and you know, there are people that just wouldn't know what to do. And I, I agree with you. I, 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 I mm -hmm. think part of our issue here, there may be bulk pickup, but I also think part of our issue here is when our inspection department went from proactive to reactive, I think that that poor old woman who maybe doesn't get out in her yard as much anymore, she has some kid just cut the grass and he doesn't know. But I think if we were to have a more proactive inspection and they're going out and they're looking, and maybe she's doing everything right, but her neighbor's got grass up to here and there's dog feces and all that food source everything he's talking about habitat and now they're burrowing into her garage or her shed or her house well, I think yeah, with I, the, I agree with you so I think with a more proactive inspection well, um, plan I don't want to get carried away either but I think where we see an abundance of calls in, in an area that you know we, we said that they're out putting out information mm -hmm. and stuff but and do you, you're making inspections of the properties then too? Mm -hmm. We had six, there's 62 of these uh, of calls or inspections that we did. That, those are representing the green dots. And, and you've written orders on those? Not all of them. Um, some of them that needed orders, some of them did not have orders if they were, if everything was in compliance with the city ordinances. Let's say their firewood was stacked and stowed. Um, you know, they had, they had bird feeders, but they, you know, they're, they're allowed things like that that we wouldn't, we, there's nothing to write an order about because there isn't type of any type of uh, enforcement violation, then we wouldn't. We would simply educate them and tell them, these are the steps you need to do. Here's a brochure. Here's some, we'll walk them through the, you know, the whole, the, the whole process of why they're there, what they're looking for, um, and what they can do to take, you know, our recommendations. Well, it seems to me that the people maybe that are, we ought to be proactive and uh, have a halftime position or something that just works on these things? Well, I'd like to refer to staff to look at, and now we word this right, but have staff uh, from inspection develop a, a proactive plan where they would increase proactive inspections looking for these obvious problems that lend itself to not just rats but other uh, issues with wildlife and, and uh, you know, uh, mosquitoes, things like that. Um, if they could uh, study it and come back with some recommendations on what they think they would need, you know, maybe it's it's 
going back and just drawing a bigger loop around these problem areas and being proactive for one year in those areas. Um, or if it's try to do the whole city um, instead of waiting for the complaints, because by the time we get the complaints, most of the times it's a bad problem. Mm -hmm. It's uh, severely overgrown or there's a serious infestation. So I guess that's, that's my, uh, my recommendation or my, my motion, that staff look into how to be more proactive um, with inspections to try and uh, head off these, these situations before they become the problems that we're seeing on this map here. Well, it, it means manpower. It, 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 it may very well be. I guess I, I would wait to see what staff recommends and then take it from there, and then we can chew on it at that, that time. So you, you want to refer that idea back to them? Yes. That, that was my motion, to refer to staff to see if they can come up with an actionable plan so on how to... Well, they've come back with a plan. <laughs> so you want something more than that? I, I want, a, I want a, a proactive plan, uh, citywide or, or just what they feel would be something that... What can they do at this point with the staff they have? How proactive can they be? How effective do they think they can be? I, I, I second the motion. I don't have any problem with it. I mean, part but of it, part of the recommendation may be that there's better education of all city employees that when they see these things, they can call it in and get it handled but sooner. You had mentioned earlier, um, how does how do certain things just seem to get a pass forever and there's 30 inch high grass? And I think that's what you mean by proactive. You want to right? Hey, somebody looking for this stuff or whatever. Well, you'd think there'd be complaints. There's certain there's certain areas where certain areas of the, of the city that are very good at being at sending in complaints and calling in complaints. Right. There are other areas of the city that whatever it is, they don't they won't they won't call in complaints. They won't have a you know have it be addressed until right they, somebody steps in somebody steps complaint. in and then it's well, and then it usually creates a domino example. effect. Uh, we have a, you have a railroad that never cuts the grass. It, it, you're, it's like an act of God. Uh, there's fields out in the old railroad yards there near the viaduct on oh, uh, National Avenue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm getting reports from people. I mean, when, there, when there's grass is this high, and it's just there, and you know that's harborage for all kinds of critters. Sure. I, I in this past ten days, I've seen two possums. I said, well, that's, that, that doesn't look like a rat, but I mean, it was crawling across the street. You know, uh, so I don't know. It, it squirrels can how create. Do, how squirrels can create just as much damage, probably even more damage inside a inside a property, inside a house. Yeah. And yet we have they were in my attic and my neighbor yeah. chewed holes into our roof and, and, and yeah. we're thing in our attic. And how much, yeah. and how yeah. much yeah. damage? Sure you a hole in my roof. Yeah. So I mean, but we have people that feed those. We have people that throw seeds and bread and peanuts and that like to feed the squirrels that. They, they, well, they like we to do that. some hawks? Oh, there, I already have two hawks in my neighborhood. They're but, clean, they're, and they're, they're, but they're just, and I have owls too, but they're just not cleaning up enough of this. I mean, my, my neighbor is up there, he had holes this big, and his soffits, wood soffits, he chewed right through it, and they're in his attic. When I had my roof redone two years ago, they found three squirrel nests in my attic. So it's, um, yeah, there's, there's a That's lot of nuts. problems. That's and it, it's not just rats, right. it's just, you know, I mean, Officer Mavis can, can talk, she talked at her, the council meeting about feral cats, people feeding feral cats, but then it creates a domino effect. Mm -hmm. You're feeding the feral cats, but that also is a food source then for rats and for for, for, for everything else. So right. the, the point of it is, is I mean, it's kind of a, we can have all the sorts of plans and all sorts of, but it all comes down to what, what we want to put our the, the focus on. And well, what I, we want the, I guess that's what I'm asking yeah. for your recommendation, uh, based on the types of complaints we got, what it would take to be more proactive, to try and never eliminate it altogether, but to reduce it. And again, it's a healthier community where you're not mm -hmm. having rats and, and I remember seeing skunks when I was patrolling on a night shift all mm -hmm. the time. They're all over the alleys getting into the garbage and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that stinks. Uh, they're the second most rabid animal in the world, and we just had a bad test positive for rabies in Brown County. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these are concerns, health concerns, mm -hmm. that we have to be uh, thinking about. And so that's what I'm looking for. Yep. Your best recommendation on what it would take with what you have, what you're capable that you think of doing, and then if you don't think that's enough, what you think it would take. I second the okay. Yep, yep. 
Okay, and as far but as I, uh, I think we got to we got to have you say broom services is looking at the bulk pickup. Yep. And um, so we need I, to. I, I think we've got to look at big industrial areas that are not cleaning the properties. I mean, uh, put somebody to work on it tomorrow. It's, I mean, it's, I know, it's, it's no different than an abandoned home than I, an abandoned I, I should have brought it along site. here today. People are so disgusted about it. They said, we're looking to move out of Green Bay. They just bought a home a couple years ago near the railroad yard there. And they said, we're looking to get out of here because they, they, they see critters coming across and they, they don't want to live where rats and stuff are. And they said, when's somebody going to do something about the railroad across, you know, the railroad yard? It's not the railroad yard, it's big, you know, it's just overgrown areas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like a wildlife area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they don't even cut the grass out by the streets and stuff like that. Speaking of the railroad, I, myself, when I was doing inspections, I've written orders to the, the the railroad several times and I have a hard time with compliance, just being blunt and being honest. Yeah, yeah. I have a hard time getting any response. Well, look how trouble we have with the roads. I mean, they're supposed to be taking care of the tracks, mm -hmm. but they don't. We, I, I, I've done several non-summer nuisance abatements myself where we fixed fences and that were damaged and we just didn't get any response. Well, then, uh, I don't know. Maybe you got to go to your congressman or something. Yep. I don't know. Maybe that's what we should do is uh, send a message from the city. But to our Congress. Uh, we can't go cut. We can cut other people's property. We, we can't cut the railroads. No, we can't. That's what I was saying that we've done. I've, we, if they're not going to abate the nuisance, yeah, then we would go about and then we would, we would well, build I them mean, like anybody those else. Those are obvious things. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean. Uh, Have those folks filed a complaint? No, they filed with me and it was. And they, they, a couple of times, they said that they filed a complaint to the city twice and there's been no response, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would have them suggest where they filed the complaint to and follow up and figure out why. I mean, that's what I do. If somebody somebody calls in a complaint and if it's inspection related, I would ask, well, what, what was done and why, what was, what was your action? We well, track it all for the railroad yard. They live near the railroad yard. They bought a home there a couple of years ago and trying to make it their home. I think his out and out said they they're looking to sell their house and get out of get out of Green Bay. Yeah, that's yeah. what they said. But I know. Well, getting back to the rats, the rats are, well, they're are growing the rats. because they, of the food. They don't like the rats. Yeah, because of the food, because of the harborage areas. Yeah, sure. it's, that's that, that's why that. You think the world has changed all that much? The abundance of food. That they have it, no, I mean it's it, there in, in every city. You look at the top fifty. List, every every city that has a lot of people have rats because there's sanitation issues, a agriculturally, and people growing food. They're always dealing with rodents. There's always dealing with pest management. Uh, that's just part of. It. They've been around since you know <laughs> beginning of time. There's animals and rodents and pest issues and things like that. So they. They multiply in the abundance when the resources are abundant. When the resources are not abundant, the numbers go down. The numbers are up because if you go in the neighborhoods, the food sources are up, the water sources are up, all of those things. Some of them but why ordinance allows, up? some of them why ordinance does, doesn't allow. I, mean, oh. I don't think human nature has changed all that much. Well, what, 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 what things have changed? Well, some I of mean, it is we, social we media. So well, people and, and some of it, you, you fix an area and they, they, they move. I mean, they're on the move. And people are more aware of the rat problems, so they're, they're, they're complaining more. Um, if you mm -hmm. look on social media, that's all you see them talking about. Uh, on, you know, rats this, rats that, and so be, and then the news does the story on it, mm -hmm. and makes people more aware, and so now suddenly they're saying, oh. Habitat disruption. Yeah, they're saying, oh, well, Properties we can call this being raised, complaint. streets, roads are being re repaired, all of that will disturb any wildlife's habitat and they're gonna they're gonna move they're gonna be active to try to look for another habitat where they're where nobody bothers them rats are very skittish they're not they're, they're gonna look for some place where nobody's gonna bother them where they have an abundance of food where they can just sneak out and go get their food and I've seen them crawl in and out of the uh, storm sewers and then into the yards I mean they're very adaptive can we just be friends don't you remember the movie no. Ben oh yeah. right. remember it we're all uh, the, the short. We're all leaders. Whatever I mean, we're going to take whatever recommendations that 
this this committee has no. and the council. So but I mean, Michael. We'll do the best we with. We'll we're, we're at we're at, we're at your motion with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. And I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Alder Gannon, second by Alder uh, uh, Zima. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you just want to speak up on this at all? I should open. No, I just. I wanted to stay for the last part because I live over in that area. Okay. I, I, I meant to ask if there's anybody who wanted to speak on this. And I do have a question. Where did, where did they go? Are we killing them? <coughs> Are they just burying them? A little of both, so I'd say. In the sewers? Do you, you don't want to answer? Oh, you want to? The no, ones that are alive? That or I can yeah. take it as well. That's fine. I was going to recycle it too. I will recycle it as well. Oh, so they're really not. Thank dead. you. They're just moving around. Well, some of them are being killed. Some of them are. You can frame are, the art if you want. Sure. One, one that I, that I uh, to would you like any. Uh, 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 the ones that are criminal, so, the ones too bad. that are doing eliminating like a oh. food, water, harbor I see it too. Is this from the suit again sometime? Yep. Yes. You know, just driving down the car, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the back side of Shadow, it's nothing but three feet weeds. And my girlfriend's the one that's so why don't you call and complain? Mm -hmm. Get all that cut down, you know. Make it clean so you can see stuff crawling around. Yeah. I gotta say, I don't think it would ever occur to me. This is all recyclable? I don't think it would ever occur to me to call and complain. Well, no, I didn't say that. I guess I just don't know that I Thank you. I just don't know that I want you. No, thank you. I'm not saying that reason. I just don't know. It's just one of the gear. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I know that. I think the recyclers have been right there. Okay. All this is fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can do this. Okay. Electric shocks. Right. No, no whipping is no eating. Yeah, but electric shocks. Right. Um, but I wanted to kind of just okay. Okay. Put that together.